I have a small confession to make. Occasionally, I enjoy some mid-anime. I know that might seem crazy given my penchant to talk about high concept, heavy on themes, artsy direction, shows, and films, and hey, if I can only pick between those, I'm staying in my ivory tower with Katana Gatari. But every season, I watch one or two shows that are unlikely for me to talk about on this channel because they're middle of the road. Perfectly fine to enjoyable watches, but without the sauce that makes me want to gush about it. This season, that's Masamune-kun. Yeah, that's my bad. In the past, it's been stuff like Spy Classroom, Sirius, Prince of Stride, Cautious Hero, Back Arrow, Angle Moise, you get the idea. Despite the fact that there are dozens of classic and highly regarded anime that I still haven't watched yet, I'm tuning into yet another episode of instantly forgotten sports anime number four of the season. Obviously, mid-anime isn't bad. This video isn't titled The Case for Bad Anime, but there's something about watching mid that's got a raw deal. And I'm here to suggest that not only is watching mid not a waste of your time necessarily, but that having a little bit of mid in the lineup is good actually. Let's get the no-brainer stuff out of the way. There's nothing wrong with liking whatever you like, and you should feel free to spend your time however you like in a way that doesn't hurt anyone else. Sometimes you're not trying to watch some high concept, deep thematic parser where we've been asked to turn to page 64 in the Camus reader provided at the start of the lecture to understand thrice upon a time. Though if you do, you'll discover that Hades' portrayal is right, Sisyphus is happy. And of course, you can only know how great something is if you have a spectrum of experience to compare it to. Now, for the real meat and potatoes of my argument, I once called mid-anime narrative junk food because I'm still at heart a teenager who watched a sequelitis video one time. And what I meant by that term is the idea that some stories are like a bag of potato chips. There's not a lot of pomp and circumstance to eating it. It's not a life-changing experience. It's a simple, consistent flavor and texture that encourages you, almost chemically, to continue shoveling them into your mouth because you derive a simple satisfaction from it. You know you should probably have something a bit healthier, that your body will break down into useful nutrients, aka a series that deals with themes of any kind. And I think a lot of mid-stories are in fact narrative junk food, and that's not said to be dismissive. I like sour cream and onion chips, I'm no stranger to indulging my base instincts as a consumer of food and or storytelling, but most importantly for this conversation, when we know we like something, we can figure out high quality alternatives, if we want to. Like how Fire Force helped me find one of my favorite shows from the last few years. Season 1 of Fire Force is what I would call the embodiment of mid. It is a completely average show with excellent sound design and fight scenes, carrying extremely simple characters and themes while having to deal with fan service that actively gets in the way. Yet I kept watching Fire Force not because its production hooked me, but because its world hooked me. World building and setting are particular interests of mine, and the world of Fire Force I find to be utterly fascinating. It's a modern-ish society in which a great fire cataclysm happened in the past, and the survivors now deal with the reality that at any point in time, they can spontaneously combust. What kind of world does that create? Well, a hierarchical theocracy and decently stratified society featuring a contingent of nativist Japanese and a large diverse group of refugees from the crisis, and non edoist Japanese who have culturally meshed into one large fire-fearing populace, where as a result the firefighting organizations have immense social clout and are therefore explicitly affiliated with various political and economics institutions. How's that for a snapshot? One take, baby, one take, woo! Fire Force is my love of world building distilled, and it was telling that any time we learned more about the setting, I was at my most interested. The Asakusa arc is my favorite in the two seasons we've gotten to this point, and there's a whole episode dedicated to infiltrating a religious order of assassins to learn more about their role in society. And I think Fire Force does a really good job in building obvious questions. Information about the white clad and the evangelist are spread out like crumbs, leading you from episode to episode when the moment to moment storyline might not be it. There's this conspiracy territorial feeling throughout the series that there are multiple political entities working in the shadows to maintain power even if that's at the expense of the populace. And that's that good socio-economic religious systems working in concert and conflict to create pressure on our protagonists that I particularly enjoy about this kind of world building. When Fire Force is fully burning, its world feels alive, with distinct actors whose actions are building into the larger whole, even as the audience doesn't understand the grand picture. Don't get me wrong, I like Fire Force's action, and I've grown to really like the characters. I'd argue that while Fire Force Season 1 is mid, even as I've talked about how much I enjoy it, Season 2 is just solidly good, which is a nice uncommon reward for sticking with a mid-show. But it is its setting and its interplay of societal systems and narrative questions that flow out of the world so naturally, like 
what's the rest of the world look like after this catastrophe that got me to like it when I otherwise would have bounced off. And I would have bounced off incredibly hard. The reason this matters is simple. It's a good guide to help me find other stories I can sink my teeth into, including ones that wouldn't get classified as junk food. You might be saying to yourself, that's silly. Shouldn't I know I like world building since I love stories like Kekai Sensen and Psychopaths and Full Metal Alchemist? If all I had ever seen is masterpieces and shows that are engaging for me on multiple levels, how would I know that I'm not just a sucker for action? Pop in Seven Deadly Sins and waste my time on a series that does absolutely nothing for me. Having something that, at least on outset, was being carried by one element that I loved has helped me as a consumer pick other series that I have a good faith belief that I'll like instead of throwing caution to the wind and picking up Liar Liar, because I like Great Pretender, right? Under no circumstance should you watch Liar Liar. So my point is, I don't really have to explain to you what drew me to Akadama Drive. Merely me telling you that it's a cyberpunk dystopia where the Kansai region of Japan is under the thumb of Kanto, with a strong police presence enforcing Kanto's laws, and the sole connection between the two, the Shinkansen, is an object of worship? You can see why, purely off of that, I was in for the ride. That is a setting that has ideas and conflict and conspiracy spilling out of it. That doesn't get into its magnificent visual style, its killer soundtrack, its discussion of justice, power, and morality, and the quick rundown is only the start of an extremely interesting world that is absolutely playing off of Blade Runner and its ilk. Akudama Drive has a little bit more of that heft to it, some of that good protein, vitamins, and minerals, all the while having a basis that I knew worked for me, that crunchy ass world building, and admittedly completely over the top action. And it's thanks to what I learned about myself as a consumer in shows like Fire Force that led me to giving it a shot. For another example that is more anime specific, because world building is a general story construction element, we could look to Nisekoi. I think Nisekoi as a story is incredibly mediocre. I do not care about these characters or the plot, it's a rom-com harem, you already know everything there is to know about it, including that Onodera is best girl, but it's a mid-2010s Shaft anime. This is peak of its powers Monogatari Sangatsu no Lion Shaft. Nisekoi is not as outrageous as the bits of Monogatari I've seen, nor as profound as the depths of Sangatsu no Lion, but as a production effort, it is fantastic. Its storyboarding is phenomenal. Its small directional touches take advantage of the medium of animation. I still love its habit in transporting characters to background that are more the embodiment of their emotional state than their physical location. In a story with a dearth of things that I cared about, Nisekoi was a nice moment of realization that a strong anime production doing things that were exclusive to its medium was something that I should seek out. We could continue along this treadline for about a dozen other shows. If you like discussions of utilitarianism in Tokyo 24th Ward, you should check out Death Parade. If you like the revenge aspect, aspect of Akamega Kill, there's no reason not to watch Planet With. If you liked the family globe trotting while the fate of the world falls onto one person in Fena Pirate Princess, you should watch Scrapped Princess. That's the utility that I find in mid-anime personally, and while I'll never look down on people for taking to an inoffensive series that I otherwise find average or subpar, something about it is speaking to them, probably in the same way that a show like Taisho Samurai speaks to me about passion. And if they can't find that special sauce anywhere else, how could I possibly begrudge them? But if my Hero Academia and Demon Slayer are your one of one, please come to these coordinates on screen right now to see if I'm serious about my desire to fight ya. What's your favorite mid-anime? Comment with your thoughts, subscribe for more, and until next time, thanks for watching.